Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and doing great. After receiving a number of requests from different sources on making a video on modeling of articulated manipulator in MATLAB, I'm making this video. In this video, I'm going to model a three degree of freedom articulated manipulator having all three revolute joints. But of course, these three revolute joints are not going to have all Z axes parallel to each other. Therefore, it will be a 3D manipulator that can move in a 3D environment. So let us get down to the business right away. Here is the manipulator that I am going to design. Firstly, at the bottom in light blue color, it is the base on which the first joint will be attached. I have labeled the first joint as J1 and it will have the Z axis or the rotation axis going upwards from the base. Then after that, I am going to attach the first link which is shown by this black color over here. And at the end of the first link, I am going to attach a joint 2 which will have Z axis coming out of the plane of this video. Followed by that, I will have another link which is shown by this green color and then joint 3 which is once again going to have Z axis coming out of the plane of your computer screens and after that there will be link 3 shown by this magenta color and at the end of that link 3 there is going to be the end effector. The dimensions which are shown over here, I am going to follow these dimensions while uh, creating the robot in the MATLAB's environment and over here the Z axis and the X axis of the world coordinate frame are shown. So let us go to the Simulink environment right away and start modeling this robot. So dear learners, this is the Simulink environment I'm going to use. And I should make it clear over here that as I've already made a video on how to design robots in this environment, so I might be skipping some details in this video. So right away, I'm going to place three things that are compulsory for any Simscape multi-body model. And those are the uh, solver configuration, which can be found in the utility section under the simscape then we have to go into the multi-body and over there in the utility section we can find the mechanism configuration so it is over here and then in the frames and transforms we need a world frame which is right over here so these are the three things that are necessary for any multi-body model that we are going to generate in this environment so with the world frame we are going to attach the base and for the base i'm going to go into the multi-body elements and i'm going to choose a cylindrical solid like this and let me rotate it and I'm going to attach this thing with the world frame. Now let me change its properties. So it is going to have a radius of 0 0.04 and a length of 0 0.05. These are the dimensions which I have already shown you. Let me make its color light blue because I've shown you a light blue base. So let me select this thing and that's it. So this will be our base. With the base we are going to attach the joint but this joint is going to be attached at the top of the base so we need to transform the frame that is the world frame from the center of the solid to the top of the solid and for that we need frame transforms so i'm going to go into the frames and transforms use a rigid transform attach its back end frame over here it is going to transform the frame from the middle of the base to the top of the base so i need to move in the z axis by 0.025 over here, I'm going to attach the first joint. So I'm going to go into the joints and then select a revolute joint, which is over here. Now, after the revolute joint, I need the first link. So for the first link, I need to move the frame from the joint to the center of the link. And for that, once again, I'm going to use a rigid transform. So I'm going to just copy it. But this time I have to move in Z direction by half of the length of the first link. And the length of the first link was 0.1. So I'm going to move by 0.05. So now I have to attach the first link over here. For that, I'm going to use a brick solid and rotate it. This brick solid is going to have dimensions of 0.1 in Z axis, and I'm going to make it 0 0.02 in X and 0 0.02 in Y axis. For the color, I'm going to choose uh, a black color because I've shown you black first link. So this is our first link, and now I have to move to the end of this first link so that I can attach joint number two. For, once, for that, once again, I'm going to use a rigid transform. Let me place it over here. Okay, let me connect these things over here as well. And let me rename these things so that we know that what we are making. So this is our base. This rigid transform is taking, our, uh, taking us from base to joint one. So it will be base to J1. Then this is our J1. Then this transform is taking us from J1 to link one. and this is our link one and now this transform is going to take us from link one to j2 okay so now we have to configure this transform now we just don't need to move in the z axis by half of the length of the first link so that we can reach the top of the first link 
but at the same time we are going to rotate by 90 degree about the positive x-axis so that now the z-axis is now pointing out of the screen of your device so for that we are going to use a rotation method about standard axis and i'm going to choose positive x-axis and i'm going to rotate by 90 degrees now at this location i'm going to attach my second joint which will be j2 so from j2 i'm going to move upwards and i'm going to attach the second link and for that now i have to move in the upwards direction by half length of the second link now keep this thing in mind that z axis is now pointing out of the plane of this video and y axis is pointing upwards and x axis is pointing towards your right okay so now we have to move in the y axis not in the z axis because if you move in the z axis you are going to come out of the screen so now we need a rigid transform once again so let me use this one and configure it to move in y axis not in z axis so we are not going to move in z axis we are going to move in y axis and the half of the length of link 2 is 0.1 because the total length was 0.2 meters i'm going to use 0.1 now over here i'm going to attach link 2 so this will be the link 2 and now this link 2 will be once again elongated in y direction because now upwards direction or the vertical direction is shown by the y axis so i'm going to change the dimensions over here so it will be 0.2 in y axis and 0.02 in all other axis okay oh sorry i forgot to change its color and the color that i showed you was green something like this okay after link 2 i'm going to move to the top of the link 2 once again so this frame is going to take me let me rename it j2 to link 2 and now i'm going to use this frame once again and it is going to take me from link 2 to j3 uh, as this rigid transform was making me move in y direction by half of the length of link 2 so i don't need to change it because the next half of the link 2 is going to be moved by this transform so over here i'm going to attach joint 3 like this and now i'm going to once again move in the y-axis which is the axis pointing upwards but this time i'm going to move by a different length because link 3 has a different length overall length so this rigid transform is going to take me from joint 3 to link 3 and the height of the link 3 was point one five so the half of that height is 0 0.075 and now over here i'm going to attach a link three so link three was of 0.15 length and it has a magenta color so i can choose something like this over here and that's it so this is my link three now i have to attach a weld joint at the end of this link three so that i can attach the end effector so for that once again i'm going to move in the y-axis that is upwards now this transform is going to take me from link 3 to weld joint or the j end effector i don't need to modify this thing because it is taking me half of the length of link 3 and that that's what i need so at this end i need an end effector so at this end i need the joint of the end effector that is the weld joint so i'm going to take a weld joint over here and attach it over here like that i can rename it as jee -E. And now I need last transform that will take me from the joint of end effector to the center of the end effector. So it is going to take me from joint of end effector to end effector. And the end effector would be having all the dimensions at point as 0 0.02. And the color of this end effector I'm going to choose is red. And I haven't modified this thing. So now I have to move half of the length of the end effector. So end effector was of 0 0.015. So the half of the length of 0 0.015 would be 0 0.0075. So that's it. This is my end effector. So this is everything. I have modeled my whole robot. So let me just run it to see whether all these things are perfectly attached or not. So you can run it. And yes, you can see that this is our manipulator. So this is our first link, which is attached with our base through joint one. And if you highlight joint one from this tree, you can see that joint one is over here and its z axis is going upwards then this first link is attached with this second link through joint two and if you highlight joint two you can see that joint two it is attached right at the center of the first link and the second link but its y axis is going, going upwards x axis is going rightwards and z axis will be coming out of the plane so to see that z axis coming out of the plane we can change the view to isometric view so that we can see z axis coming out of the plane so you can now see that z-axis is coming out of the plane 
After link two, we have link three, and these two links are joined by joint number three. And once again, the z-axis of joint three is coming out of the plane. And after that, there is end effector at the top, and that's it. So I guess we are good to go. Now, just quickly, let me drive this robot so that we can see that how this robot is moving in 3D space. Over here, let me take the opportunity to mention that uh, although I'm using these simple, straight, boring looking uh, links, uh, because in MATLAB, I don't have the liberty to design these links quite uh, beautifully. Uh, what you can do is you can uh, design these links in SOLIDWORKS or any other CAD modeling software, and then you can easily import all those links over here so that your robot looks nice. But no matter what kind of links you have designed, if the kinematic structure or the configuration of the robot is similar to this robot, then the movement is not going to change. The, any, anything that is going to change, it's the, uh, it's the outlook. So let me quickly uh, save this thing. But for before that, let me enclose these things into blocks so that I can easily arrange this thing. So now this subsystem is my end effector and this connection port is my JEE port. This is my joint of end effector. These three things can be enclosed in one subsystem and this is my link three. These connection ports are JEE because on this side we have attached uh, the end effector joint and on this side we have attached J3 joint number three. This is link three then we have joint three. These three things can be enclosed in a subsystem and labeled as link two and this port is of joint three and this port is of joint two. So this is our link two then we have joint two and before joint two we have link one and this port is of joint two and this port is of joint one. So this is our link one, this is our joint one and at the end these two things will constitute the base. So here is the base and this side is the world frame and on this side we have joint number one. These things over here as well. So that's it. Now this is our robot once again. So at the start we have the base with the base, we have it as joint one. With joint one, we have it as link one, then joint two, link two, joint three, link three, end effector joint, and at the end, the end effector. That's it. Now just, miss, uh, just let me save it so that I can generate the rigid body model of this robot so that I can use it with Robotic System Toolbox to try this. I'm going to save it with the name of uh, DOF3 underscore RRR video. This is the model I have saved. Okay, so now let me run the import robot function, which I have already written over here. And let me provide it with this file, which we have just made. Now after running it, I will receive tuf 3 underscore RR rigid body tree over here. So in the workspace, you can see that this variable is now over here, which is a rigid body tree. Now I can use this rigid body tree with my robotic system toolbox to drive this robot. So now I'm going to make a new model file and in this model file, I'm going to copy and paste my whole robot so that this robot doesn't get changed. So now in this new file, I'm going to drive the robot and now I have three joints. So for these three joints, I need to adjust some settings so that I can actuate them by providing motion, that is the angle. So I'm going to choose motion provided by input and torque will be calculated automatically. And on the other side, I'm going to sense the position so that I, so that I can provide this position to the forward kinematics block and that forward kinematics block will give me the positions of the end effector. So for all the joints, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to make the actuation in of motion provided by input and the torque computed automatically and I'm going to check the position sensor. Same is going to happen with joint three as well. Now I need to provide these three joints with the joint angles. And for that, we know that we need something from the simulink. So for for providing something with the simulink, I need a simulink to BS converter and I have to configure this converter with certain options. I'm going to provide the angle in radians and for the input signal, I need first input derivative calculated and I need second order derivative because I'm going to calculate the torques automatically. So I, it is going to need second order filtering. So that's it. This is the configuration of simulink to BS converter. I'm going to need three of them and I need the input port over here and I'm going to need three of these input ports. I'm going to attach these converters with the joints so that whatever is provided from the input port is converted into physical signal and then is given to these joints. On the other hand, I need to move the measured joint positions from the physical system into the simulator. 
So I'm going to need a physical system to semilink converter. And once again, I'm going to use three of them. I would place these like this and connect one physical converter with each joint. And over here, I need output ports. And once again, I need three of them. Okay, so, so this is my Q1. This is Q2. This is Q3. And on this side, this is Q1 measured, Q2 measured, and Q3 measured. So that's it. Now I'm going to enclose these things into one big system and call this system my robot. So this is our robot. Now we have to provide these three angles, joint angles, and it is going to measure these three joint angles and provide us with the output. So uh, you know that how to use a signal builder because I've already, already explained that. I've already made that thing in another file i'm going to just going to open that file and show that to you so this is the file which i have already made i'm providing three angles using this signal builder if i open this you can see that these three signals are going to be provided to the robot as joint one angle joint two angle and joint three inside this block is our same old robot which we have just made and then the major joint angles are provided to the forward kinematics block and this forward kinematics block is going to calculate the x, y, z position of the end effector. Note that this forward kinematic block is exactly the same which I've already used. The only difference over here is that I am providing the new rigid body tree which we have made for the three degree of freedom manipulator. So in this get transform block, I've provided this rigid body tree and selected the source body as the last body of this rigid body tree and the target body as the base of this rigid body tree. Okay, so I haven't done or I haven't changed anything in this forward kinematics block beyond this thing. So that's it. Now we can run this thing and see that uh, how our robot is going to move in the 3D space. Okay, so here is the simulation and you can see that our robotic arm is moving in 3D space. And if I change the view, the isometric view, you can see it moving a bit more clearly. So it is moving in a 3D space, it is rotating, it is doing everything which we have commanded it to do. So dear learners, I hope now you can uh, model any kind of 3D manipulator, whether it is a three degree of freedom, four, five, six, or beyond that. The things you just need to remember is the basics. So I haven't used any new thing, which I have already talked about in my previous videos. And we have made this articulated robot. So if you still have any questions, you're always welcome to contact me through the email or through the comment section on YouTube. And that's it for this video. Thank you and take care.